Okay, so on this problem, I got a train going along a track uh, at two meters per second. It starts to accelerate given that equation there. Okay, I want to find the velocity and position at three seconds. So I have acceleration, velocity, right? Acceleration as a function of velocity. And I want to figure out what the velocity, what the position is at a specific time. So again, I'm going to go from acceleration, velocity to time, I'm going to use the fact that the acceleration is the time derivative of velocity, right? Knowing that my <clears throat> acceleration is six times V to the negative fourth, set that equal to DV DT. Now, again, I'm going to use separation of variables on this one, but what happens is I bring DT to the left side Okay, I need to move all of those V's to the right side. So what I get is one sixth and then V to the fourth over on this side times DV. So that's my separation of variables that I use on this. I'm going to integrate both sides. Okay, and I'm going to go from zero to T. Starts at time zero going to some arbitrary T. My velocity, my initial velocity is actually two. Remember, I see that right there. So I go from two up to some arbitrary velocity that I'll call V, okay? The left side is very simply gonna go to T. Again, from zero to T, that, that drops off. <coughs> My right side will become 1 30th V to the fifth. And again, I'm gonna integrate this with respect from two up to V. So what I do is I plug in V and I get uh, V to the fifth over 30 minus, two to the fifth over 30. And that gives me my equation for time as a function of velocity, which is then going to be V to the fifth over 30 minus 32 over 30. And that's my equation for uh, my time, okay? Now, plugging in three seconds, Okay, I can solve for V and I do that and I find that the velocity of three seconds is then 2.61 meters per second. All right, so that's how I find the velocity of three seconds. Now, I need to move a little bit further and I need to go to um, uh, I need to go to uh, the I'm sorry, the position. Now there's a few ways I could do it. I could go one step further and I could say V equals DS DT, but I wanna use an equation we haven't used before and I'm gonna use the equation A DS equals V DV, showing you that I can go directly to this one from my equation, right? Again, knowing that A is six V to the one fourth DS equals V dv. Doing separation of variables while well, this, basically bringing my v's over to the other side. So I'll have ds on this side. Over on the other side, I'm going to have 1 sixth v to the fifth, right? Because again, I bring that v to the fourth over, take it times another v that I have over there because I have v dv over on that side. And I'm going to integrate both of these sides. I'll integrate this side from zero up to s. Okay, from some position up to new position. And again, my velocity goes from um, zero uh, up to, uh, not zero, I'm sorry, my velocity starts at two and goes up to some arbitrary V here. So again, the left side just very simply becomes S. My right side now becomes V to the sixth over 36. And again, this will be evaluated from two up to V. Okay, so plugging in V, I get V to the sixth over 36. And plugging in two, I get two to the sixth over 36. Okay, so here's the thing. When I now have an equation for my position, okay, and I want to find this position at three seconds. Well, I don't have three seconds. However, when T equals three seconds, I know the velocity equals 2.61 seconds. I'm going to take that plug it in right there. And then from that, I can find that my position is 
eight meters. I can find that position from that. So that's one way I could do it. The other way I could have done it, and I'll let you do that on your own if you want to see it, is I could have taken my velocity as a function of time that I found initially and then integrate that one more time to get to position as a function of time then plugged in three. Either way is fine, okay? But I just wanted to show you uh, that other equation that we have not used yet.